people of West Hartlepool are very friendly people. They have a fine spirit, get together, enjoy themselves. The town is not a new town, but has all the amenities we want. But we also have our black spots like anywhere else, when there's been slum clearance. But we also have our good spots, about the estates, well planned, well laid out estates, fine schools, and a very good community spirit among the people. But in the past, we've always relied upon the engineering industry, steel, and shipbuilding. And in shipbuilding, we've some of the finest craftsmen in the country. The local shipyard held the blue ribbon for the most, most number of ships built in the past. And these people are really grand workers stick together, work together, live together. And when unemployment came, you found all of these people just left hanging in midair. It used to be a busy yard, throbbing with life and vigour. But now there are only idle berths, idle machines and idle men. It was a big shock uh, when you've worked years at a place and then suddenly seeing your livelihood going. It is a real shock. I mean, it's a little bit indescribable. It sort of knocks you for six, if we can put it that way. Had you and your wife been worrying about the possibility of this happening? Well, from previous rumours, we had discussed the situation, but of course, uh, we just uh, hoped that things would turn brighter and uh, be able to carry on, that the firm would carry on, but uh, it didn't just turn out that way. Were you optimistic about the prospects of getting another job? Well, at first, uh, we all live in hope, and uh, I was one of them, being an optimist, and uh, I had, uh, Hope that things would come that right, right way. But uh, as time goes on, well, hope gradually fades away. And when you see the number of people that's out of work in this area, well, uh, it just about finishes it off altogether. To the unemployed, the labour exchange becomes a focal point. It draws together the 3,660 people in West Hartlepool who are waiting for work. Signing on at the exchange replaces clocking on at factory or shipyard. It's a ritual to be observed twice a week, every week, but one which ensures a basic income. To one in nine of the town's working population, the labor exchange is now a source of funds, a source of hope, and a source of disappointment. For every vacant job, there are more than 40 applicants. Yet despite this, many still wait optimistically for news of a vacancy from the manager, Miss Saville. I suppose they're optimistic, but in the light of the last two or three months, it's difficult for them to sustain it. What do you do when you have a few jobs? Do you offer them to everyone or just to the lucky few? No, we try to give as many of them an opportunity of being interviewed as possible, but we have the interest of the employer to consider. So we, we try to select a half a dozen, or depending on the number of jobs, of the most suitable people. But we do try to give them all a turn. Many unemployed people have told me that queuing for Dole is a humiliating experience. Is there any way you can cut down the length of waiting for Dole? Well, I think we do really cut it down as far as we can. We have a, 
uh, a timing system where we use the whole of the day by quarters of an hour. We try to time as many into each into a quarter as we can deal with, and no more than we can deal with. And we use two days of the week instead of one, which we would use in normal circumstances. We pay both on Thursdays and Fridays. Well, is there any way you can improve the amenities for the people who have to wait? Well, no, I've got the building that was built for the job. But if the numbers should get too much, of course, I would have to take an outhouse and use that. Aren't you able to put seats or chairs or pictures in the building? Well, we have some seats, as many as we think can be used, but our object is not to keep people waiting, it's to deal with them and get them out. Not only manual workers are unemployed in West Hartlepool. Brian West is a white-collar worker. He was a booking clerk in a local factory. Well, I studied two years at a commercial school, and I wrote shorthand. I can write, still write shorthand at 180 words a minute. I've typed about 45. I've got advanced bookkeeping, and in a course of business management. And I've passed Royal Air, Royal Air Force education tests when I was in the Royal Air Force. He hasn't used any of these skills for eight months. His qualifications are valueless assets when there are no jobs available but he has acquired a new skill since losing his job. The household chores are his responsibility while his wife's out working. She assumes her husband's role of wage earner while he becomes housewife. Washing, ironing, cooking, caring for the children. I have to do all that myself. It's a job I to start up in the morning by dressing them. I feed them in for the breakfast and at lunchtime, but my wife does help to get them ready for bed at night. Who decides on your budget? Well, I've got to do, with me doing the shopping, I've got to spread out the money, the little bit of money we have, um, on food. But otherwise, my wife does more or less tell me what to get in, etc., etc., each day. We do the shopping from day to day, not by weekly. On what little luxuries you can afford, say, drink and tobacco if you smoke, who decides on how much is allocated for things like that? Well, we both decide that together. We don't drink and we can't get out. We can't afford luxuries, naturally. Uh, we do smoke a little bit, but it is very few. How did the children react to you being mum, as it were? Well, they were very strange to, to me at first, but they have gradually come used to me and they look forward to the mother coming in at night from work. How far does it embarrass you that your friends know that you are an acting housewife here? Well, it is an embarrassment, having to run over and do all messages and one thing and another. And, uh, they often say to me, how do you manage in one thing or another, but I just have to put up with it and we do the best we can. Mrs West, do you like working now? Yes, I do, but um, of course I would rather be, you know, at home and my husband having a job. Do you feel more independent now that you're working? Well, I don't really, you know, because, um, well, I think that it's up to her husband to go out to work, you know, for him to have a job and then go out to work. If your husband got a job, would you stop working? Well, if it was a really good job with good pay, I would, you know, but um, really, I would r rather work on till about six months or so, just to get a bit of money behind it, you know. How has the attitude of the children changed to you while you're out at work? Has it changed at all? Well, I don't think so, not really. But at first, they were a bit upset, I think, you know, they missed me. As soon as I got in the door, they were straight up, you know, the face lightened up and that and said, Oh, Mummy, you know, I'm glad to see you and all this, you know. Despite unemployment, the vigorous gaiety of social life in West Hartlepool goes on, but without the unemployed. None of them go without the necessities of life, but the dole doesn't provide for luxuries that most people take for granted. Staying away from the pubs and clubs involves no material hardship. It's one of the many economies affecting social life that the unemployed just have to make. Careful shopping, too, becomes essential when there's money for little more than necessities. As a shopkeeper, I find the effects of unemployment in West Hartlepool that in small but revealing ways, the, the customer of mine will come into the shop while he's working, buy his kiddies, a bag of sweets, then he seems to disappear for a while and then he comes and arrives back and instead of buying his usual bag of sweets, perhaps a Benny bar of chocolate, just for his children, uh, getting something, and then you have the the lady 
customer, the wife of the unemployed chap. She normally comes in and buys one or two women's books and their children's comics. And then you find that she cuts their books out and the children still get their comics. Now, well, the main effect uh, the uh, unemployment in the town is having on my business is that uh, I find the customers appear to make the hair or try to make it last a little longer. When they do eventually come in, they say, well, you better make it a bit shorter, Tom. And uh, I, I cut it shorter for them. Sometimes I want it shorter in the neck, thinning out, so it'll last a bit longer than usual, you know. And, uh, of course, they get the odd occasion that they're, they're so desperate for a haircut, they want to go somewhere, they get an amateur to do it. And then they come in with a big muffler on or something and say, for God's sake, Tom, can you put this right for me? And um, there have been occasions when some of the women have been really waiting for the husband's pay packets. And they've asked me, well, uh, I can't send the lad down till Friday. So I said, well, send him down at the early part of the week when I'm not so busy. And he can send the coppers down on the Friday. I mean, as steel workers, they, they've stopped the mills on a Thursday down here. There's no steel workers working after Thursday. Well, I mean, those chaps who used to be regular customers of mine, there's such a lot of them now, they, they, they just put off that extra time, they wait longer, and, and they, when they come in, they want it to last longer. I mean, uh, as a matter of fact, I just spoke to the wife the other day. I, I said, I think, well, if it goes on like this, and it does continue to go down, I'm going to pack in, get a spare time job, and just open the shop at weekends. A little trimming here and there is not enough to make up the loss of a weekly wage. For families with children, the major problem is meeting needs which remain constant whether work's available or not. An unemployed man receives two-fifths of the average weekly wage, together with family allowances and national assistance when necessary. What kind of adjustment does he have to make? Well, I've been unemployed now for four months, and um, unemployment per £6.19. And uh, we get a little bit from the public assistance, which is 28 shillings. And um, but it's pretty difficult now to more or less manage with the money we're getting at the moment. How does that compare with the money you used to get when you were working? When I was working, oh, it's um, oh, it's a big drop. It's quite a big drop. I was getting about 20 pounds a week at the job I was working at, and um, well, it's just about eight pounds seven shillings. We're getting clear coming into the house at the moment, and well, it's a vast drop altogether. Have you got any other sources of income in addition to the £8.7? Uh, none at all, except that, well, we've got milk tokens and um, it's free dinner for the, one of the lads that's at school, and that's just about it. Did you have any savings when you finished work? Yes, I did have a little bit, but uh, most of that's gone now, and uh, well, we more or less have to uh, scrape through. What direct hardship is involved? How does it basically affect you? Well. I like my, I like to smoke, I used to like to go for a drink, but I can't go for a drink at all now, and me and my wife used to go out regularly, what, at least two or three times a week, we can't go out at all now, and, um, well, the burns sort of feel it in a way, because you can't give them, sort of, more or less ice cream, sweets, things like that, you can't give them as many as you would like to, or shoes and things like that, if, uh, I mean, more or less now, they're starting to run out with the shoes a little bit, and, um, well, we'll have to, buy them some more and I don't know <laughs> well, I don't know how we're going to manage with the money. Just have to try. Do the shoes all go at the same time and the clothes and things like that or do you have separate problems with the four kiddies? Well, uh, sort of, there are separate problems of course but um, more or less when we buy them for one we try to buy for the other and more or less it does come in one big heap. Otherwise there's other odd little uh, odds and ends that uh, one of them may need at times but uh, more or less it comes at one big jump. Uh, have you reached the stage yet of pawning things? Pawning things? No, not, not as bad as that yet, no. <laughs> Apprentices don't have family responsibilities, but these boys attending a trade union meeting with their fathers are very conscious of the financial effect on them. Well, when I was at work, I used to get just under three pound a week. But now when you get 32 shillings, and pocket money, I used to get a pound, now when you get about five shillings. Well, I go to Boys Brigade, and that only cost me two pounds a week. But night school cost me about four, four or five shillings a week bus fares. And on the weekend, I can just, just go to the football match on a Saturday afternoon. Well, before, I could afford to go out with maybe two or three pounds in my pocket and I would merch and enjoy myself. That would last a week now, I only get about pound pocket money. Doesn't go very far, that. I mean, by the time you go out with the lads, you go for a drink, you come back, you got about four bob, it's got to last you the rest of the week, that. And you, you can't afford cigarettes, you can't afford women, you can't go nowhere, really. Pound pocket money, 
Used to take me, used to last a week, but I only get about five shillings now. Didn't go anywhere. I've just lost interest in work now. Just have to think about it, what you're going to do now for the career. Why have you lost interest in work? Well, I've been on the door a month. It doesn't seem as though I'm going to get a job now. You know, you get fed up just sitting in the house reading books all day, you know. When it comes to night time, you just sat watching the telly. I mean, when you were at work, you were, like, occupied, you know. You had something to do at work, you know. When you come home, watch your telly. You'd like it, you know, but when you just sat in the house all day, telly comes at night time, you know, you don't want to watch it, you know. You feel fed up with the thing. When you go out with the lads, you like to enjoy yourself, but you can't enjoy yourself if you haven't got any money. Why not? Well, when you go out with them, they expect you to go to the same places as though they do. But uh, when they go to the pictures, you spend your money on the pictures. You're left with buttons. It's hard to even to pay for your bus fare, never mind going in the pictures. And it affects your hobbies and all. If you're saving records, you can't afford to buy a record a week if you're on the door. So you have to cut down on all your things. You can't be expected to enjoy yourself when you're on the door. You know, very rare I go out with a girl now. No, well, you, very, you can't really get very far on about 15 shillings with a girl. Because you can't afford to take them out every night. I'm only getting 10 shillings now. I was used to about 25 shillings. Well, when you take them out, you, you more or less have to pay for everything that they have. So when you take them out once, that's about all you can do. Do the girls ever offer to pay for you? Well, they offer, but it's more or less accepting charity, taking it from them. Well, you, you feel awful taking it, don't you? Boys are concerned with entertainment. Men are concerned with feeding their families. The consumption of meat is a fair guide to living standards. To what extent have the butchers of West Hartlepool been affected by unemployment in the town? Well, oddly enough, my business hasn't suffered at all. As a matter of fact, over Christmas and New Year, we had an all-time record. Now, don't ask me why or how. This is contrary to all my expectations, but the facts prove, the figures prove, and my accountant can substantiate it, that I had an all-time record, both for volume and uh, money and every other way, I'm delighted to say. Have you got no way of accounting for this while there are 3,000 unemployed in West Hartlepool? Well, boastfully, yes, because I give good value for money, and I think now people find it's better to go to take the trouble to get that bit extra value and travel the another hundred yards if necessary to get it. Conversely, you see, I think that when we've got an era of full employment and prosperity, which we all desire, let's make no mistake about it, we don't want to have people unemployed. That's obviously nonsense. But they get a little careless. They tend to go just to the nearest shop at hand, pop in, spend the money, now, I'm not saying that all the shopkeepers are villains. I don't want any misconstruction about that either. But there are better values in some places than others. Now, you may say this is boasting. Well, it's boasting. But oddly enough, since times have become worse in figures of unemployment, so has my business prospered. And I feel there, there must be a lesson for the shopkeeper. Many unemployed people have told me that they're eating less meat. How do you account for this in the light of your own experience? Well, I, I, it just doesn't apply in my case. People are, are not eating. Uh, it's, uh, one can see that they're not eating less meat. Just, in my case, they're eat, they are eating more meat. And uh, I think it's terribly difficult in a business the size of mine, which covers the entire spread of the town, to say that people are eating, say, more stewing beef and less, well, fettered steaks and such like, which are always scarce anyhow, let's face it. I don't think that there's any change in the habits of the people. If it's here, it doesn't come to my business and I'm not seeing it yet. I've got no evidence of that. Not all the butchers in the town share that point of view. Well, things have dropped a little bit during the last six months or so. with so many people being out of work. Uh, some people don't come in for me now. I don't think they can afford it. We have other people now, instead of getting a joint the weekend, they maybe get half a pound of chops or a pound of chops. Uh, people are buying smaller joints. Uh, they've cut out such things as frozen foods, which are more of a luxury, and uh, in general, uh, all of them are slightly cutting down. 
Uh, are your prices competitive uh, with other butchers in the town? Yes, I think we're as competitive as anyone. We uh, have a very competitive block where we are here. There's about four butcher shops, and we have to be really low down in price to uh, get the trade. Do the customers who buy the cheaper joints tell you what else they're buying instead of meat? Well, uh, yes, I think they mostly buy potatoes, and maybe when the vegetables are cheaper, they'll buy a lot more vegetables, make do with less meat. But on the whole, it's not drastic yet, although we are expecting it in the future. For unemployed families in real need, the NAB is able to supplement their dough. Instead of queues at the offices, the assessors visit men in their own homes. The number of unemployed men receiving assistance has more than doubled in the last year. Of the 3,660 people who've lost their jobs, 40% are receiving allowances from the board. Now then, I have the form which you filled in at the employment exchange, from which I see that you're getting unemployment benefit, uh, which isn't quite sufficient to meet your commitments. I'm pleased you've applied, because there are still a lot of people who don't know the facilities that are available, and uh, these are the people we want to reach. It's strictly confidential too, I must assure you of that. No one will know anything at all about it. And above all, if any grant is payable to you, please don't regard it as charity. It's a right you've got. Uh, I have to ask you a number of questions, but as I said before, it's confidential all the time. Uh, how long have you been out of work? Six weeks. Six weeks? Uh, what rent do you pay here? One pound sixteen and six. One pound sixteen and six. And how many children have you? Six children, including the triplets. Six, including the triplets. The information gained from these interviews is filed, checked and assessed. On what basis is an award made? On the basis of scales approved by Parliament, which, when rent is added, gives a basic standard from which we work. This standard, of course, can be adjusted to meet the special needs of any particular case. How much flexibility do you have for special cases? We have quite a lot. Considerable discretion to meet the needs for extra fuel in the case of people who need it, uh, for extra nourishment if a person is sick. In fact, in many ways we can meet the needs of any particular case. What qualifications do your officers have, the people who make these awards? What qualifications do they have? They're, this is a government department, as you know. They're civil servants. They have the qualities of humanity, uh, understanding and sound common sense. Do you think that civil servants rather than social workers are better fitted to make this kind of decision? Oh yes, I think so. What is the average payment made by the National Assistance Board? It varies, of course. Uh, the size of the family, the amount of rent a man pays has an effect on the allowance he'll get. But in general, and in the northeast region, the average supplement to the unemployment benefit is 30 shillings and seven pence a week. How do you encourage the eligible people to apply? By all the means we can. We have leaflets and posters in every post office and employment exchange in the country. Uh, we have our contacts with the various organizations, the voluntary organizations. We do our best to encourage people who are entitled or who we think are entitled to apply as soon as they can. Are you satisfied that all the people who are eligible do apply? Well, we try to reach them, but uh, we can't tell, of course, uh, who needs. We, we, uh, the facilities are available. We try to spread them as widely as we can, but we can never tell whether everybody who is entitled to it is getting it. Even with national assistance, prolonged unemployment creates difficult financial problems for some people. They're not completely destitute, but their reserves are gone if they ever existed. And the family is wholly dependent on unemployment pay and any supplementaries it can get. The effects are more evident on families like this, and they tend to become increasingly despondent. Well, I've been out to work eight months now and things are getting pretty grim, like you can't do justice to the children, you can't get them the proper food and clothing. How much were you earning when you were employed? About £18 pounds a week. And how much unemployment pay do you get now? I get six pounds straight from the labour bed and I get it made up to eight pounds with the National Assistance Board. Do you get any other kind of assistance? Do you no, get... I don't get no assistance from anywhere. Well, only, do you get only... three meals? Three meals for the children, but the youngest one, Kenneth, won't stop at school, but he's the oldest two get there late. Did you have any savings or any commitments when you finished work? Well, I had no savings, no, and uh, commitments, I'm paying for them now, like £2.15 a week. That's things that you bought when you were still in work? Yes. 
Well, how else do you break your budget down? How do you spend the eight pounds a week? Well, uh, there's like 31, 31 shilling for the rent, like, and then there's nine shilling for coal, uh, two pound fifteen for tickets that we've had, uh, electric light, three shilling a week, and then there's a the gas, money for the gas. Yeah. What about food? How much on food do we... Oh, about two pound a week. Food. Mrs. Kilmer, how do you feed a family of six on two pounds a week? Oh, and that's two. You have to just go around and find the cheapest stuff you can find. How many meals a day do you have? Me and my husband have one we do without to give the children. We won't let them go without. What do you have for your one meal a day? Oh, we have a dinner, and that's all. But the children do get everything. How do you go on for meat? Oh, I only get the stew and meat, you know. Half a crown's worth, that's all I get. Do you manage meat every day? Well, I usually get a shilling's worth of mince meat. And that has to do with a lot of us. What about milk? I get one free pint and one cheap token. And do you manage to get fruit for yourself and your husband and the kiddies? No, none at all. How about vegetables? Just the potatoes and the sixpenny tin of peas. Apart from food, what other things do you economise on? Well, mostly my food and my coal. And when we have no coal, well, we just have to do without. Or chop something up, put on the fire to make a fire for the children. What sort of things can you chop up? Oh, I've chopped my table up and I've chopped two dining room chairs up. Even my shopping bags that's gone in the fire. We just have to do it, because we won't let the children go without a fire. And if we have nothing to chop up, we'll sit round the oven, the gas oven, with it on, to keep warm. Now what about the gas? Uh, do, do you spend a lot, then, on the gas in order to keep warm? Oh, yes, two shouldn't to three shouldn't a day I spend on the gas if we sit round it. Has the health of the children been affected? To now they've been all right, like it's mostly me and my husband. We've gone down and we're terrible. I used to wear eight stone, now I wear eight six stone seven. My husband used to wear ten stone, now he's only seven stone eight. And when we have nothing at all, I took his suit to the pound shop. My heart is No longer meeting at work, a gulf opens between the employed and the unemployed, a gulf which is not bridged in the pubs and clubs. There are few ways of meeting friends without spending at least a little money, and the unemployed have no surplus. Unemployment isolates them. I know quite a few people. We used to go out with, you know, and uh, see them. Uh, I'd bring the wife out tonight. No, we can't afford it, staying at home. We want to employ you to come, but we don't see them as often as we'd like to. This, of course, is due to the uh, financial embarrassment. <coughs> this, of course, can be based on one thing, the like the pint, we have all drink together. This, of course, doesn't happen. I would say that, um, far and large, this is going to be uh, possibly a, a social stigma between the worker and the non-worker. We hope not, but we, we, we want to try to, wherever possible, keep our relationships and our friendships that we have done over the past. But I, I often think, you know, when you talk about things like this, that the discussion about helping them just to have a drink or something like that, it doesn't just end there. There's a lot more things than companionship without beer, without a drink or without a smoke. And there's many a time going out. You miss a man's company, you miss his friendship. And when a man isn't working, he feels as though he has to stop away because he hasn't got the money in his pocket. Would you be prepared to work half a week to allow the unemployed to work half a week? No, without any doubt at all. And it's something we have done, in actual fact, to share work. Shift men have shared works, shared work at the steelworks. Men are sharing work now at Richardson West Guards. Yes, it's a, good, it's, a, it's a good principle and one I'll stick to all the way through. I work in industry locally, the same as our friend along there, and we agreed to share work. 
if we are going to have unemployment, we said, right, we'll go along the right way and we'll share the work out so that if we have to work four days a week, we would work four days a week. It's the only answer to it. You can't have a man on the door and another man working. Do you feel more insecure because of unemployment oh, in the area? Without doubt, without doubt. We are alarmed at unemployment. We're not frightened of it. For the simple reason, we believe in the future. But I think that everyone that is employed at the moment has got this threatening axe. They don't know where it's going to fall next. If there's 40 people waiting outside the gate for your job, you more or less got to put something, some extra effort into it. We know for a fact that um, this is against the principles, more or less, adopted by the trade unions. But after all, one's got to look after oneself preservation. With a steadily rising unemployment figure, there's less money circulating in West Hartlepool. Businesses are affected, and trade in the shops has fallen in the last six months. The expensive household goods are affected most. For those on restricted budgets, food, rent and fuel have a higher priority than washing machines, refrigerators and television sets. But some small businesses, like second-hand clothes shops, are not having a bad time. New clothes are too expensive for some unemployed families, especially those with growing children. Second-hand dealers are doing good business because some people want to raise extra money by selling what they can spare, while others want to buy goods cheaply. The articles cater for all needs and all ages. They're sold on a commission basis. We charge them 12 and percent, and uh, they're allowed to leave their goods with us for a month, and if we don't sell them, then they can take them out or leave them for another month for a small rent. We charge a small rent, you see. You don't think that 12.5% is rather high, considering that you have no capital invested here? No, I'm afraid we couldn't work under less. We shall never get rich, but we find the business very interesting. In fact, it's fascinating. <laughs> what kind of rent do people have to pay to keep the goods in here? It's about 5% over the month. Yes. How has unemployment affected the kind of things that people want to sell? I think it's stepped up the quality of the goods we get, probably. Probably people are reluctant to part with some of the goods we get, but uh, they're wanting some money. And uh, you know, in that way, we're able to help a bit, I think. Do you find that more people are wanting to sell now rather than to buy? Yes. Yes, I think so, yes. There's not the money about just at present owing to the unemployment. But um, anything over about four or five pounds, we find sticks a bit now. What can they do to help themselves? If there's no work in West Hartlepool, how far should they travel to find employment? Here's West Hartlepool. One from West Hartlepool to London. From London, we went into Wessex covering all Essex area. From there, we made a detour back to London, up to Peterborough. From Peterborough, we went back to West Hartlepool. The following week, we went into Newcastle, covering all the Newcastle area. From there, we went into Team Valley, covering all the Team Valley area. Came from there, came down into Sunderland, and back to West Hartlepool. Well, did you not get a job in any of these areas at all? Oh yes, I was up with jobs, but the rate was no good. I couldn't afford to live down there at all. But weren't you offered the trade union rate for the job? Oh yes, I was offered trade union rates. But I mean, the trade union rate wasn't high enough. What sort of rate do you want? Oh, between 17 and 18 pounds. I must have that to send money home. I have a lot of responsibilities. House, furniture, wife. Why don't I go down south? Why should I go down south? This is my hometown, and this is where I live, and this is where I've been brought up, and this is where I've been working since I left school, and this is where I'm prepared to stop. The, the, the streets of London aren't lined with gold. There's money here when it comes, and I'm going to be prepared to stop here and wait till the job arises. If I did move, if I did go south, it would mean running two homes, because I wouldn't think of taking the wife and the children down south, because this is their home as well as mine, and this is where the wife's parents is, 
and my parents. And therefore, going down south wouldn't solve anything as far as I'm concerned. This is where I'm staying. I don't think there's any need for us to go down the south of England after all said and done. We bred and born and we started fool, and I think we should, uh, well, I think we should have work up here, without any doubt. Do you feel that West Hartlepool owes you a living? West Hartlepool doesn't owe me nothing. It doesn't owe anybody anything. Uh, we owe West Hartlepool something to try and make West Hartlepool something. They don't owe us anything. We owe them it. I expect we've got the work to, to keep going. I mean, the point about it all is it's, it's not a point of saying, does West Hartlepool owe us anything? All we want to do is to go to work. We don't want to owe anybody anything. What happens if unemployment goes on indefinitely? What will you do then? Well, that's a big point. I think we'll just have to wait on that question. I mean, the point about it all is, <laughs> if it goes on indefinitely, well, I mean, that's a very big point, I think, that one. I think, uh, what do you mean by another two or three years? Something like, oh, my God, we'd have to do something. We'd, go, we'd have to go down south. We'd have to do something really drastic. I hope, I hope to God it doesn't, uh, it doesn't go on that long. It's about time somebody done something about it. Because I think there's a lot of chaps who are getting bloody sick about it myself, like I don't know about anybody else. Some people do get jobs in the South, but unless the family can go with them, they create as many problems as they solve. I got paid off seven weeks ago, and I've been to London for a job and I've managed to get one in Hatfield, just outside London. Will your wife and child be joining you there? No, not yet. We haven't got a house down there. Are you going to sell this house? No. This is, uh, as we haven't got a house down there, we can't sell it yet because there'll be too much money lost. You mean you won't be able to sell this house in any case? In any case, because, well, the people in the town haven't got the money. It's with them being out of work. How long have you been in this house? Three years, but I was in Germany with the forces for two of them. So you've really only lived in this house for one for year? For one year, yes. And now you're leaving again? Yes. There are plenty of houses for sale in West Hartlepool, and many would leave to find work if they could find accommodation elsewhere. For some who own their own houses, it's increasingly difficult to sell them. Well, we find that houses such as this behind us normally would be selling overnight or certainly within the course of a night or two. And now just the opposite is happening. They're standing for many months in some cases. And it has made a very big difference in the, uh, as far as the people are concerned, the owners of their houses who just don't know what they're going to do. They can't commit themselves to other houses until they've got rid of the present houses. And it's had a very big effect on the speed with which houses are sold. Is this because the unemployed can't buy them? That is one of the reasons, but it isn't only the unemployed, it's the insecurity. We know of people who have committed themselves to buy houses, and having committed themselves, they then find that when the building society make inquiries for, from the employers, on behalf of the mortgaging people, they just dare not commit themselves any further, the security is not there, and where the people themselves thought that they were probably working indefinitely, they find from the employers that the security has been cut altogether. Within two or three months, anything could happen. How seriously have prices been affected? Oh, very much. Uh, we have evidence of houses in the 4,000 region, which, after having stood for five, five or six months, have come down. The asking price is now in the 3,000 regions, and still the houses are standing. Of course, that doesn't mean that houses aren't selling. There are still houses going, but nothing like they were going some time ago, say two or three years ago. Have you any idea how many houses there are for sale in the town at the moment? I would think there's something between four and five hundred. At least four hundred, probably near a five. She's Venus in blue jeans, Mona Lisa with a ponytail. I'm a skilled tradesman, a sheet metal worker, which I serve five years at. Now, nine months ago, into redundancy, I got put out of my job. Now, I tried a job in a tailor's shop. They asked me to get a black suit out of my savings. Well, I did that, but due to overstaffing, I got pushed out. So now I'm trying my hand as a singer. I've been doing it for quite a while, and I hope I can make a name for myself. Most of West Hartlepool's unemployed don't expect to make names for themselves. Their main hope is to find jobs and use the skills they've acquired in the factories and shipyards. Well, I've applied for 18 jobs in all since last April. Seven of them have been uh, advertised. I only 
only heard from two of those. And the others I just went round and asked if they had any work, but there hasn't there has been any at all, nothing you're doing whatsoever. Really, he's, he has been a bit depressed, and I've been a bit depressed, you know, but it's just one of those things you've just got to get over it. Oh, I've wrote umpteen letters, and I've, I've been over to this trading estate oh, a dozen times. But of course, I haven't just touched out it up to date. The letterbox goes, and it comes galloping down, and it's another disappointment. That idea, you see, and I'm horrified he uh, sort of loses his sense of humour, you know. That's what bothers me more than anything, not so much me as him. You see, I mean, at first, we always sort of thought, oh, here's another chance. But since then, it's gone on and on, and he says, oh, no, it's the age that does it, you see, that idea. As soon as they know you're 57, you seem as if you've had it. There's nothing, no. Still works is on three day a week, which is the biggest um, concern in the town. Uh, other places have been paying them off, well, the biggest majority of them. The shipyards closed down. Um, what the expansion is sort of on slack time, on short time as well. The paid men off. Um, half the men that were on the crew that I was working with, they've been paid off. There was 90 men on the outdoor squad, and there's what 45 of them being paid off. Terrible, I think. It's not right for a man to sit around the house all day. He doesn't know what to do with himself. He can't go out anywhere. And there's just nothing to do. Well, I've been all around the town and looking for work here. There's no work at all. I've been to Stockton, Middlesbrough. There's no work there. You can't get a job anywhere for love, no money, you can't. Oh, it's sitting pretty badly, he feels, because he's never been out to work, you see. And he's just sitting about. He doesn't know what to do with himself. He's been out looking for jobs, but he can't find any. He's never been out to work since he left school. This is the first time. But as the days go by, you just sink. You're inclined to sink lower and lower. But I feel that I'm losing a certain dignity and self-respect. And uh, you're inclined if, to let yourself if you let yourself go, to think that you're becoming a bit of a parasite living on the backs of your fellow men. 